Phil Jasner and I have been friends since junior high school. And we went to uh, Temple University, of course, where we were, um, Phil was the sports editor of the Temple News and I was the sports director of WRTI. In the quote old days, they gave the beat to the least likely candidates uh, because the NBA was not an important thing. And, uh, and yet there was this guy, a complete pain in the neck in Philadelphia who actually insisted upon getting facts, uh, upon asking questions, and actually not even being satisfied with some of my answers. That's very annoying, uh, but, but good. Well, when I first met Phil, um, I had been coaching the Philadelphia 76ers for a while, and then he came on the staff for the Daily News to cover the team, and you know, who was this kid covering the team? In many cases, he ruined a good story. He would ask both sides their opinions of a situation, and of course, that ruins a good story for a writer. Right from the start, you could tell it was a young man uh, that was worked very hard, uh, loved his job, Love the Seventy Sixers. I would say it's it's a love love fest he has for Sixers, but it's a love fest in a sense. He feels he's it's his job to protect the the brand of the Sixers because he's been there for so long. His whole goal is try to write the facts, and so with the Sixers, he's always trying to. He never wants to be scooped. Uh, he always wants to be first, but more than being first, he wants to be right. I think he's actually getting a little establishment. I hate to say that about him and ruin his reputation, but you can't get recognized by every major organization that awards journalists uh, that recognizes them. Uh, you can't be actually the head of, of the Basketball Writers Association of America and purport to represent the grievances of your fellow journalists and the like without uh, giving in a little bit. And so I always got a kick out of the, uh, shall we say, the corporatization of Phil Jasner. But beneath that, uh, beneath that is uh, still the pain in the neck journalist who would just as soon cause a little trouble as long as he was right and as long as the integrity for which he's known was always on display. Phil is an amazing writer and he is a, he is a meticulous professional and he is driven and, and he is sincere and he is honest and he really cares about getting a story right. He's not out to sensationalize. He embodies all of the enviable principles of really good journalism. I think people um, who know him, you know, they're always his integrity, always, I mean, especially, you know, like with work, he, he won't, even if he thinks something, he won't put it down or he won't say it unless he absolutely knows from the source that it's true. My dad works hard and, and he's gonna you know, dig until he gets stuff. He goes to as many sources as he possibly can and puts everything through a filter. What makes Phil unique and really not too many left like him is he knows everything. He understands the broader context and if you tell him something in confidence, then you know it's been told in confidence. I have never heard anyone ask him a question that he didn't know the answer. The, the passion has never, never waned. I'm pretty sure he's going to keep writing because he just loves what he does. The ultimate is that his son does the same thing that his father does as a sports reporter. You know, we were at the NBA Finals together, sitting together, covering a national event together, we were in Chicago and Seattle and Salt Lake City. And, and I think he just loves sports and loves life. 